welcome to this week's Ask Charlie. I am sitting here because although it's bright and sunny outside, it's blowing an absolute hooli. It's quite wild. So I've got a cuppa and I am just, yeah, thought I'd sit and chat, chat to you guys today. I get asked this so often. Charlie, how do you eat what you do and stay so slim? And let me just point out, I'm not an expert at all. I have done courses in nutrition. I have been cooking and catering for 22 years. So I know quite a lot about food and have learnt and am learning all the time. But I think my best bits of advice, and Simon doesn't listen to me, I just have to add that in. And yeah, anyway. I, I have given up because if you nag, you don't get anywhere. So it's better that I just leave him to his own devices. And if he wants to come to me for advice, then that's absolutely fine. Occasionally I do um, point out that maybe that's not the most sensible option or really we don't need birds, but I try to keep Sturm as much as possible. Anyway, food, what I eat in a day, let's talk about it. Let's talk about all sorts of, well, I have quite f strong opinions, let's just say. So the first, first, first things are never diet and get rid of the bathroom scales. We actually do have a pair of bathroom scales. Simon uses them. But I did say earlier he doesn't listen to my advice, but I actually can't remember the last time I got on them. I don't believe in weighing myself and I do not believe in diets. But I do believe in eating sensibly eating carefully, not using food in a negative way. So don't think like, oh yeah, I've, I've worked out really, really, really hard today. That means I can go and have McDonald's. I think that is a bad mindset to get into because you're saying, well, if I've worked out, then I can eat this stuff. I like to just be very, very sensible and very practical and very boring about the whole thing. So I have like 80% good healthy food, 20% of stuff that I want. But I've got, been doing it for so many years that I don't think about it anymore. It's just become part of my life. So. For example, and the reason why I don't believe in diets is because if you are right, on Monday, I'm going to start a diet and I'm not going to eat this and I'm not going to eat that and I'm not going to do this and I'm not going to have that. Then all you want to think about is that stuff that you've said you can't have. You start on a Monday and you've set yourself up to fail by, I don't know how long, but, but whatever it is. And I see so many people fail when it comes to dieting and really struggling, but I think it's, it's mindset. Don't say you can't have anything because then you want it even more and even more. So, you know, for example, I don't drink fizzy drinks very often, but if I feel like a Coke, I'm gonna have it and I'm not gonna beat myself up. If I feel like a glass of wine, then I will have it. I might even have two, but I'm not gonna be drinking every night, but I'm not gonna do dry January because then when it gets to February, you're gonna be like, oh, you know, that first of February, you'll probably have an entire bottle and then you'll probably have more, you know, and it just builds up just sensible, little and often if you want it and kind of in moderation. I also don't believe in low fat anything. So just don't like any of that low fat stuff at all. It's packed full of alternatives. So, you know, you think you're low fat yogurt. Well, what's that got in it, got in it, got in it instead? Your low fat drinks, your sugar-free drinks, you know, all of those things are have got hidden alternatives that aren't better for you than having that full fat version um, in moderation. You know, at the weekend, I did have a can of Coke because I felt like one. I had been working really hard and had a really busy day and I was physically needed something. Um, and, I, and I enjoyed it without beating myself up. And I really believe it's kind of in the mindset. You've got to sort of tra 
train your mind to think in the right way. So, for example, when I'm teaching children to cook and when I'm working with fussy eaters, I say, imagine you are a car and your body is the car engine. I mean, well, you have to put the right things into that car engine to get it to work properly. Otherwise, it's just going to break down. And our bodies are exactly the same. So, okay, I don't particularly like broccoli, but I know that it's really good for me. So I eat it up. And I teach children, and my children, and, and children that I've worked with and nannied for, you know, in the past, that it's not all going to be your favourite, but it's good for you. And there are different um, minerals and vitamins and nutrients in different food groups. And we need all of those to make our body, our engine, our brain work in the right way. And so, you know, we do need some, some fats. Butter is not bad for you. It's much better than having the low fat spread alternatives. We need the protein, we need the carbohydrates, but we need a kind of sensible, balanced diet. When I say a sort of sensible, balanced diet, it's okay to have sweets occasionally, it's okay to have biscuits and crisps, but it's not picking out and eating the whole packet of biscuits or five biscuits, it's having a biscuit and thinking that's okay. Um, crisps are really, really bad for us. They're so Moorish, but they're not good. And you've got to think of things, of the calories. Are these calories going to help me? you know, do good for my body. No, but they're going to taste quite good, maybe, if you like that kind of thing. So just have a small packet or just make a small portion for yourself and then put the bag away in the cupboard. You know, use one of these clips. Wonderful. And it's about having sensible portion sizes. You know, you don't need to fill up your plate. We went out for lunch um, on Sunday, which was such a treat. And I had, I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. I had roast beef and Yorkshire pudding. And my plate was so full. And I would have been sick if I'd eaten all of that. I enjoyed the beef. I had one of the Yorkshire puddings. And I think I had one and a half potatoes and I ate most of the veg. I grew up with eat everything on your plate, but at home, I give us sensible portions. You don't want to kind of overfill your plate with loads of food. If you're still hungry, of course, go back and have seconds, but never overface yourself with a huge portion and then think that you've got to eat it all, because actually you don't. And when I cook, a lot of the time I you know, will batch cook, and there will be extra, but those are kind of portions for another day that will then go kind of in into the fridge or freezer or whatever it might be. So think kind of sensible portions. I don't need to fill up my plate with all this stuff. Um, I don't drink tea or coffee, and that's something that I've just never really done. I think because I find the idea of putting milk in water a little bit bizarre. So I drink um, lemon, a uh, squeeze of lemon and a slice of ginger is my kind of go-to. And I drink probably about 15 of these a day in the winter. I quite like it when it's gone cold as well. But often we think we're hungry and we're actually not, we're thirsty. So it's really important to um, drink regularly throughout the day. Don't lug it all back in one go just little sips constantly have a bottle or you know a mug with you i do absolutely swear by matcha and this is something that i have been having for five years so matcha does have caffeine in it but it's slow release so rather than um you having the highs and lows of having um caffeinated drinks tea coffee uh cokes that sort of thing this is slow release so you just kind of gradually go up like that. And this is amazing for your immune system. It is packed full of antioxidants. It increases your metabolism and it helps with water retention. And I just swear by this stuff. I have at least two every day. 
it's also really good for hair, skin and nails. And so, you know, this is not sponsored by Lee at all. I um, have been on a few of her boot camps. I've got to know her. She's amazing. She's wonderful. And this product is incredible. So I do drink that twice a day, which I think really, really helps. But I do a lot of exercise, which means I can eat, you know, rich puddings and I don't have them every day. We don't, I don't have pudding very often. I do have a massive weakness to chocolate. But again, rather than eating the whole bar of chocolate, I'll just have kind of four squares and really enjoy those and be quite happy with that. And, I, and again, I think if you deny yourself from having these things, you want it even more. And so in the evening, rather than having a pudding, I'll just have a couple of pieces of chocolate and be quite happy with that. And you know, on the whole, a mug of hot water. Sometimes I'll have a gin and tonic, but again, I won't go for the slim line. Um, I will go for the full fat options and just, just be sensible about it. I am really, really active. So I do pretty much a 45 minute workout five days a week, pretty religiously. I wasn't so good last winter. I found doing the ponies and my workouts quite difficult to fit into my day but I noticed that my body really suffered. Now I don't mean like my body is and how I look because I don't care very much how my body looks. It's not about that, it's about how it feels and if I feel good from doing my workouts and if I feel strong myself I'm more confident, I stand up taller, I feel better about myself, the wobbly bits tighten up and my clothes fit well and so that's why I do it because it makes me feel good I don't want to parade around uh you know in a bikini look look, look at me um but I feel good in myself and that is amazing for me and so that's why I get up at ridiculous o'clock and do do that because um, I've got this funny muscle condition, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, um, I have weak bones and it makes everything better, stronger and, and, and works really well for me. I walk a lot with the dogs, <laughs> constantly on dog walks and then I'm mucking out stables, I'm poo picking, I'm gardening. So I, you know, I'm really, really active. I used to have a Fitbit. It's actually in the kitchen drawer over there. I got quite competitive with myself and I'd be monitoring how much I'd slept and I'd be checking my steps and it was exhausting, to be honest. I probably do, I'm guessing, 15,000 steps a day on average, maybe, maybe more but I don't want to monitor it. I don't want that pressure. I just want to enjoy being. You know, cleaning the house is a good workout. Being outdoors, walking the dogs. So I do do a lot of exercise. So I am burning off a lot of calories every day, which means I can have, you know, yummy, yummy food. But again, I think it's sensible portions. You know, I do eat pasta. I do eat bread. I'd rather go for sourdough because I know it's much better for me than, um, you know, synthetic white bread. I do cook from scratch the majority of the time. Sometimes we will have fish fingers and chips and that's okay. It's, it's getting the right balance and I think not beating yourself up. And again, having that kind of 80-20 mindset of... 80% I'm going to eat, you know, good, healthy, balanced meals. And then 20% of the time I can, I can have a treat, a cheat. And whether you balance that out as in like two days of eating what you want and um, five days of eating really sensibly or just mixing it up. And I think I do the kind of mixing it up. So I eat the majority of the day pretty sensibly, but if I have a biscuit, if I have a few pieces of chocolate, that's all right. And I do have a big, big weakness for Danish pastries. <laughs> Those are something I get um, quite excited about. 
Uh, but again, I will only eat one. I won't have any more. I don't want to feel sick. I don't like that feeling. I do have quite a little frame. So my arms are quite skinny. My legs are too. If I put on weight, it tends to be between here and sort of mid thigh. It doesn't go down my arms or down my legs. So when I put on weight, I just kind of have this barrel around here, which isn't a particularly great look at all. And I hate it when, um, well, yeah, when my clothes are feeling kind of tight and uncomfy. And that's why I don't need scales because if, you know, my jeans are a bit tight to get on after Christmas or whatever, I just think, okay, we'll just ease up on the chocolates. Just walk a little bit more, get active. And I think that actually exercise, it's, it's kind of 50% exercise and 50% what you eat in the kitchen is my personal take and kind of how it is for me. I don't, I can't lose weight without exercising and without moving because I love food, I love cooking. And so for me, that doesn't really work. I have to move my body more in order for me to lose a couple of pounds if that's what I want to do. And so, for me the two go hand in hand and I think that's really quite important to remember that starving yourself doesn't work because your body hangs on to um to the fat and it's really really unhealthy if you're trying to lose weight of just cutting your calories dramatically because your body will hang on to it and then it will go into a really unhealthy place and then it's just not good. You need to do it sensibly. And yes, eat slightly less calories a day, but move a bit more, be burning them off and eat sensible kind of good, healthy, healthy food. I don't like the expression clean food, but you know, just really sensible food. Yeah, just, and a homemade. Homemade is so much better for you. Um, than all of the shop bought stuff with all of the hidden kind of additives and you know they put so much flavors and sauces and salts and things like that to make it taste really good but that's not so good for us so try to start cooking more I think is, is um, really really important so that has been quite rambly, but hopefully it's been helpful. I think the most important things are don't diet, get rid of the bathroom scales, eat full fat stuff, but just eat sensibly. Sensible portions. Do you need that portions of seconds or actually have you had enough? And think about it. You're like, do I really need to have this biscuit? No, I don't. Just learn to walk away from it and actually having smaller portions your um your stomach will shrink and you won't need to eat so much and I definitely know that's the case with my husband but make sure that you drink enough and get enough fluids that is really 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 crucial you should be drinking at least two liters of water a day so, but constantly sipping constantly sip um your water and if you don't like cold water like I don't particularly like cold water which is why I drink my hot water with lemon and ginger because it's really soothing it's really I find it really calming I find it just grounds me and I just sip at this you know if I've been out for a dog walk and I come in and my mugs got cold I'll just enjoy it cold because actually it's got lovely flavour. So you can, you know, flavour your water with cucumber, with some lemon, with some lime, um, with some mint leaves from the garden, or, you know, get a pot of mint and, and have it in your kitchen and just pick up that if you don't like plain water. But it's really, 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 really important to drink lots of water and I I was talking to Coco about it the other day and I was like, you know, darling, you're not drinking enough water. So I got her a bottle. It's at school with her. But it's got, you know, how much she should be drinking. And 
I've noticed a big difference in her um, appetite since she has been drinking and she's noticed it too and she's feeling better and she's got more energy and so it is really important that we keep hydrated. I just emptied the washing machine and while I was doing that I thought of something else that I should have told you so <laughs> I back out the washing and thought I would just uh, jump back on here and tell you. Um, when you get overtired and you have a late night you tend to eat really really badly the next day so whether you know you've been at a party, you've um, just been at home and drunk too much, had a late night, whatever. The next day you tend to eat just, you, your body craves all that bad stuff. And so I do think it is important to try and get sensible early nights, not like early nights every night, but just, you know, don't get overtired because that's when you make really bad choices and really bad decisions and you have that McDonald's and you have, or you have that cooked breakfast and, um, you know, just chocolate and crisps and bad, bad, bad stuff. And then you feel bad and then you feel guilty and it just goes wrong. If you're going to have a late night and you know you're going to have a really late night, just make sure that you've got kind of good, sensible, proper food, easily kind of tanned. So whether you've, you know, just defrost something out of the freezer or whatever it might be, but just don't kind of go crazy on those days when you're really tired. And I know I've done it. And if you do, don't beat yourself up about it. It's okay. Just get an early night and get back on track, you know, the next day. And I tend like I don't stick to it at all I don't like I'm only going to drink at the weekends I don't do that but I tend not to drink very much occasionally I might have a glass of white wine um if we've got friends over that might be two glasses but I won't um I won't drink every evening because it's those extra calories that that aren't good and also so important if you've got children don't pick off their plates when if they haven't finished everything. Don't eat their pizza crusts. Don't eat their leftover fish fingers. You don't need them. And that's where kind of all those naughty extra calories creep up because in your head, psychologically, you think, oh, I haven't eaten. I haven't actually sat down and properly eaten. But you've probably had like half a meal picking at their things. So that's something to be really mindful as well. And when you do eat a meal, try and sit down and make it kind of a nice experience. Eat slowly, don't rush your food. Take time to kind of swallow it and digest. If you eat it really, really quickly, it doesn't send the messages to your brain that you are full and that you've eaten. Whereas actually, if you take time and enjoy your food and chew it properly and you know properly digest it, then, you feel full, you feel satisfied, and uh, your brain is getting the right messages. So that's uh, something else to be um, to be mindful of. I also just realised I didn't actually tell you what I typically eat in a day, which I probably should have done. So I start my day with granola. I don't have it first thing. I do my workout first. I there and I have a shot of matcha while I'm doing my workout. I then do breakfast for the children. Then I go up and do the ponies and then I come and have my breakfast and I have a bowl of granola and I have yogurt with it. Uh, normally kind of Greek yogurt, full fat, um, and maybe some berries if I've got berries, either in the freezer or, um, you know, fresh seasonal berries. Um, and yeah, so that kind of sets me up for the day. I tend to have my breakfast slightly uh, later. So it's about 9.30, 10 o'clock, something like that. And that will keep me going um, for quite a long time. Um, at the weekend, I might have croissant with um, jam. I love my homemade apple and blackberry jam, my marmalade and those things. But on the whole, I tend to have granola or oats or overnight oats, something like that. I find oats kind of just keep me going for much longer. Lunch tends to be a bowl of soup and sourdough um, on the whole, or it might be like a salad and um, some fish, some, some cold meat, something like that, um, jacket potato. 
And then in the evening, we tend to eat as a family as much as possible. And that will be things like cottage pie, lasagnas, um, it might be meat and veg, you know, just a kind of good home cooked meal. I do love pasta and I do, you know, quite a lot of pasta. The children love pasta as well. Um, I love things with grains and lentils and um, rice pulses and those sorts of things. Try not to eat too late into the evening. I like to be able to digest my food before I go to bed. So I don't like going to bed on a really full tummy. So we try to eat somewhere between kind of six and seven and um, try and avoid snacking. I do have the occasional biscuit. I do find mid afternoon when I probably have another, sh normally have another shot of matcha about three o'clock. Don't tend to have matcha after three. Um, but sometimes if I'm feeling tired, if I've had a particularly busy time, I will have, um, I will crave biscuits. And again, if I feel like I want to have one, I have one and that's okay. But on the whole, I try to eat kind of sensibly. I do, as I mentioned, have quite a weakness for chocolate. So, um, yeah, it might be the odd bag of Maltesers here and there or um, bar of chocolate. Um, but as I said earlier, I'm really, really active. And so kind of that's OK. And I don't beat myself up. But I try to eat good, wholesome food and a variety of fruits and veg. Um, I'm probably better on the veg than I am on the fruit, uh, particularly this time of year when there's lots of lovely fresh fruit in season. Um, I will eat that. Um, I do try to kind of eat seasonally and I don't like buying things that are flown all over the world if I if I can avoid it um but again it's just being sensible but I you know I won't buy strawberries I will not buy strawberries or raspberries uh out of season um I just cannot do it I must get back to the laundry and all sorts of other things I've got two sleeping shall I just get a little flow to show you um they are so sweet, look, sleepy little baby girl. She's such a puppet. We are just loving her. And Lola seems to have really calmed down as well. So that is good news. I mean, for a Labrador puppy, she's never going to be calm. But she's being a bit more sensible, isn't she, little Florence? Yes. Yes, she is. Yes. While I've been driving, my mind has been... Um, whirring and I thought of something else that I wanted to share with you. I often think about how our bodies are designed, what we're designed to do and what we're designed to eat and if you go back you know centuries we weren't designed to be sitting on our bottoms, we weren't designed to be driving cars, we were designed to be kind of working and active and moving all of our body and being quite physical and having to kind of hunt for our food and you know all of that and so I do often think back to that and think you know come on you need to move your body's designed to be active you're designed to kind of eat like this we weren't designed to sit down and have three meals a day um, and so I do think it's something to bear in mind and to think about you know when you're struggling on you know weight loss and getting motivated to exercise just think hang on what was our bodies designed to do we're designed to be super active hunt gather for our food and to eat seasonally you know it's why come september the hedgerows are full of all of these wonderful wonderful things packed full of vitamin c you know your elderberries your blackberries um you know all of those sorts of things packed full of goodness to boost your immune system to get you through the winter it's so clever so it's really important to bear that in mind i hope that you have found this helpful i do get asked so often um how do you stay so slim and eat so much but it's just eating good wholesome food and being really sensible about it anyway Thank you for joining me. Please leave me comments below. Let me know your tips. Share them with me. 
um, with everybody else that would be super helpful. Wishing you a great weekend, week ahead, and sending lots of love, and I will see you again soon. And remember to hit that subscribe button. The more the merrier. I really want as many eyes on my channel as possible. Um, that would be really, really helpful and can you know keep me going producing content for you every week. Anyway, lots of love. Thank you. Bye.